All right, everybody. So today we have Janet Gonzalez from Nova Southeastern University College of Dental Medicine. Janet, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing pretty good. Okay. Um, just excited to be doing this interview with you and, you know, letting presenters know what happens once you're on the other side. Yep, and it's always, it's always better being on the other side, right? Of course. <laughs> yeah, it's much better, it's much better. Yeah. But um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you can, please give us a brief summary of your dental school journey. So where you're from, where you went to undergrad, what you major in, and did you take a year off? So um, I actually wasn't born here. I was born in uh, Cuba. I moved to the U.S. when I was 12 years old. So I did uh, eighth grade and then I did high school. Mm -hmm. When it came time to apply for college, I decided to stay in Miami and I went to Florida International University. Okay. And then I started doing my bachelor's degree with a pre-dental focus. Um, during my bachelor's, I always knew that I wanted to take a year off at the end, mm -hmm. um, just because I wanted to like, you know, experience more the dental side of, you know, I wanted to work in a dental setting and see like for myself, because I don't think you get enough experience from the shadowing, yep. even though it's great, it gets you like it's some exposure, but not like the full, you know, experience. Right. So um, I graduated college and then I started working at a dental office. I worked uh, the front desk and then eventually I moved on to be an assistant. So I did that for about like two years. Um, it ended up being a longer gap year, not because I wanted it that way, but I, when I applied, I did not get into my first cycle. Okay. So that's when I decided I was going to do a master's degree. So I went for a one year master's at NOAA. Okay. And then I started D1 after that one year. Okay, so I actually did my master's program at, um, at Barry. Oh, nice. So we used to always come to the NOVA library. That's like where we would study. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm sure we might have even been there at the same we time. We have a lot, a lot of uh, Barry graduates yep, yep, in every yep. class, at yep, least yep. like 20. Mm -hmm. I think Barry's like also like a funnel, like, like you said, like a direct like feeder program into NOVA. I yeah, know a lot of sure. my previous classmates went there. But yep. awesome, awesome. And so, okay, so you didn't get in your first time. So I'm assuming that you retook your DAT, yes or no? Yes. Okay, okay. And so, you know, being someone who's taken it twice, and I'm sure you improved your score the second time, can you kind of give our viewers, like, your number one tip on how to be successful in the DAT, especially because you've seen it from, like, both angles? So I actually took it three times. Okay. Great. <laughs> um, <laughs> First time taking my DATs, I, you know, came out very confident of undergrad and I was like, how hard can this be? You know, it's just a test. Right, right. And I kind of went in without studying much and it reflected in the grade. Yep. <laughs> so second time I was like, you know what, like I'm going to put a little bit more effort and, you know, study a little bit. Um, so I, I did put in more work, but still the grade was like, very average like an 18 or something um third time around i was like you know what like i really want this and i'm gonna give it my all so that time i quit my job you know was not in school and i spent literally three months studying monday through monday 12 hours a day so when it came time to take the exam i knew i was gonna do well there was no way that i wasn't gonna do well i just didn't know like how well i was gonna do and it ended up being like, I got, I think a 23 or a 24, which ultimately I think that's like what, you know, was the deciding factor in them accepting me right. more than my GPA. And so what, did you use any like specific programs or are there any programs that you would recommend? So um, this was again, a long time ago. Um, I used, I kind of studied on my own with a friend and I used all the destroyer books, mm -hmm. all of them, math, orgo, chem, bio. Um, I did DAT bootcamp. We had just, it had just come out, mm -hmm. I think that year. Um, like just the bio notes that you find online, um, 
there wasn't any like eye prep or anything, or at least I didn't know about. Right, right. Um, when I when I took it that last time, um, honestly, like just I was focused. I was you know determined that I was gonna do well. And a good advice, just like try to get it over with the first time around. If you do everything right, you're gonna get a really good score. Awesome. For sure. Yeah. It's just like putting in the effort and actually working, being like right? focused, yeah. you know, so you don't have to do it multiple times like me and spend all that money too. Right. Great, great. Okay. And so while you were, you know, you were considering Nova the whole time, um, were you involved in any type of like pre-dental programs? Like does Nova have any programs like that where so a pre dents can kind of go see the school and then kind of show that they're interested in going to the school? So um, Nova's super involved with uh, pre-dentals. Mm -hmm. We have um, pre-dentals from Nova undergrad, mm -hmm. uh, FIU, and uh, UM, which are like the closest universities. But we also get students that are coming down from UCF in Orlando, or even UF that they make the drive all the way to Nova for like specific events. So we have. Um, ASDA does a lot of events with the pre-dentals. We have, I think, ASDA week. It's like workshops and like um, impression workshops and they do like wax ups and um, they draw in the little pads. And um, for Give Kids a Smile, the pre-dentals play a huge role because they volunteer not only the day of the event, but also prior to the event in like decorating committees and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, for example, my sister's a pre-dental at FIU and she participated this year and was actually like on the board of Give Kids a Smile, even though she's not, you know, in mm -hmm. dental school yet. Yeah. Awesome. So um, there's a lot of, you know, different activities throughout the year for you to show face and, you know, show that you're interested in the school. You get to meet the um, admission deans and like everyone and it's, no one likes that. They like when you, you know, show interest. Um, also, we have a dual degree program, dual admission program. So for students that are interested, it's like a seven-year track. So what happens is that when you apply for undergrad, you um, apply for undergrad and dental school at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you do three years of your bachelor's. And then if you maintain a 3.4 GPA and a 20 in your DATs, you go straight into dental school and you graduate from your bachelor's after D1, which is mm. pretty cool. That's awesome. I think. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, great, great. And so, so now I'm going to ask you about your actual interview. You know, I think that a lot of pre you know, they, you know, understandably are very nervous about the interview process. So can you kind of walk us what it was like going through your interview at Nova? So, um, no, Nova's known for having a very chill interview process. Mm -hmm. It's very relaxed. You feel super comfortable the whole time, you know. You could tell that, like, the students are not there to, like, judge you or catch you on anything, you know. Mm -hmm. um, during the tour that they do, it's um, two current students and then they leave the group of um the students that the pre-dentals that are interviewing and they ask they like you know let you ask them questions about anything literally anything and they just make it like very comfortable for you so whatever nerves you have or you know if you're super freaking out like they're calm you down a lot and you know at the end of the tour you're like super you know, confident that this interview is going to go well because they're not going to ask you like any crazy questions or anything. Um, interview process is very like, they want to get to know you. Like they already know you as a student. They know your grades. They know your extracurricular. They know like whatever you're going to brag about, they already know. Mm -hmm. So what they want to know is like personality. Um, are you going to be a good match for this class? You know. Um, just, it's a conversation. It's literally like us talking right now. Mm -hmm. That's how the interview is. They're not gonna ask you any tricky questions to like catch you or like, you know, make you freak out or something. No, it's very chill. Okay, awesome. And did you interview at other schools or was Nova like, you just wanted to go to Nova and Nova was- So, 
I I went through like you know the phase where I wanted to get out of Florida, mm-hmm. and I applied to other schools. I interviewed at the other schools. That was the first cycle that I applied that I mm-hmm. did not get in. Um, when I applied again, I was like, you know what? Like I'm getting older, and I kind of just want to be here. Like mm-hmm. I, my whole family's here, so I really didn't want to leave. So that last time, it was just Nova. Nova, awesome. Mm-hmm. awesome. Okay, and so if you can, you know, take a, a trip down memory lane, if you can kind of walk us through what it was like to be a D1 at Nova. So like, what were your didactic classes like? Um, did you all have any experiences within the clinic? Um, and were you all even able to like pick up a drill and start drilling on tea? Or fake tea, at least, you know? <laughs> so D1 is insane. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's crazy everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. It's, yeah. um, I wish there was a way to like prep people into, you know, knowing what they're about to face. Mm-hmm. But honestly, if you haven't been through it, like there's no way because nothing can compare to it. It's mm-hmm. like, insane it's insane um so it's an adjustment period at the beginning you know you have i think we had like over 30 something credits or like 40 credits or something ridiculous like that um so you need to plan ahead you need to you know figure out how you're gonna study for all these classes and also practice in sim lab um for me, like, luckily, like, SimLab, I kind of got, you know, around it, and mm-hmm. I felt pretty confident in it. So then I tried to focus more on the actual sciences, mm-hmm. which I thought were my weakest point. Mm-hmm. Um, first round of exams, you know, like, if what you're doing is working, you keep doing it. If it's not working, then you need to switch it up. Yep. So um, we do get... Um, Clinic rotations, D1. Um, So I I don't think we get to assist in D1, at least not the first semester. I think the second semester we start assisting. Mm -hmm. Um, But in SimLab, we we pick up a drill, you know, pretty early on. And um, we start working on patients that summer, beginning of D2. So we do fall, spring, and then that summer we already we start doing perio and actual like patients with your own like patients huh with your own patients or is this like it's like a pool that they give you for recare so they have like you know a rotation that only d2s are in clinic at that time and then all all we do is perio and perio evals but you it's pretty cool because you actually get to like you know interact with a patient and touch Mm -hmm. them and not be scared of them right 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 Um, but it's it's insane it's insane the only good thing is that everyone is going through the same thing so you really don't feel alone because you're gonna make a ton of friends in dental school like and everyone's on the same boat so it's not like you were missing out on a saturday night because everyone was missing out out, yeah Yeah. (laughs) very true very true okay and so you know i've asked uh every difference every other school the same question like what's something that from your experiences and from, I guess, hearsay from other students at different schools that you can tell me or tell the audience is specifically unique about NOVA and like what's something that would make somebody want to say, hey, I want to go to NOVA? So I have heard like from other schools and, you know, different states and even here in Florida um, that there's like maybe like a cutthroat environment, like overly competitive and, you know, very clicky and, um, you know, you have to stick to like your people depending on where you're from. And Nova is like the complete opposite of that. Like we have a huge diversity. We have people from all over the world. Um, We also have people of completely different ages. I think my D1, we had our youngest was a 20 year old and our oldest was like a 42 year old or something. Um, and everyone is friends with everyone. I don't know how they like, I don't know. I don't know what they do to like right. choose a class that ultimately like you're friends with the whole class, you know? And I could either hang out with like my group of friends or like this other group of friends or literally everyone, everyone is always, you know, friendly and, 
willing to help and you can literally go up to anyone and be like hey like i'm struggling here and they will stay up with you in sim lab helping or like they'll teach you like their charts or like the way they study you know it's it's like a it's like a family almost mm -hmm. um and it's not only with the people in your class also upperclassmen mm -hmm. they're like that too super super helpful like insane that you would think you know since you're like higher and older like i don't want to talk to like these newbies right, right. no no they're very very nice and like the environment is very like welcoming i okay. think that's awesome okay and, and janet last question of the interview if you were able to go back and talk to yourself while you were going through your you know your two years off while you were reapplying just going through the application process in general what's something that you would say to yourself Oh my God. Um, definitely ask questions. Like mm. I thought that I knew everything and I didn't even know like a quarter of it. No. Like I was applying with whatever information I heard from, I don't even know who, or I found online or, um, I really didn't know anyone that was like, you know, previously had gone through the process mm -hmm. that could like guide me. But it doesn't matter like you literally go on instagram or anywhere and just message random people and they're willing to help you so for sure like ask the questions you know be well informed i personally don't think i got in because i applied too late in the cycle you know that's number one priority like apply early do everything like the way it's supposed to be you know yeah. um just so that you have a better chance at a better outcome but definitely like reach out, you know, don't be scared. Like everyone goes through the same thing and yeah, definitely ask questions. Amazing. Amazing. Janet, thank you so much for your time today. If anybody has any questions, is there like a way that they can reach out to you and ask those questions? Yeah, they could um, message me on Instagram or email me or probably Instagram is the easiest. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, I should say it now or like yeah maybe. you can say it now and i'll also put it in the description but you can say it now so it's super random it's that girl janet with two t's <laughs> um just message me there and ask me you know pretty much anything I'm, I'm an open book and i'll tell you how it is awesome awesome once again janet you know from the future dds family we want to say thank you so much for your time today and uh, we really do appreciate you thank you thank you so much for having me of course, of course. Everybody, if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions for us over here at Future DDS, you can always shoot us a message on Instagram at underscore Future DDS, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But until next time, see y'all later.